Okay, uh, Marianne, you want to take the roll call, please? Mr. Gritchen? Here. Mr. Resco? Here. Dr. King? Here. Mr. Moon? Here. Mr. Walsh? Here. Mr. Welch? Here. Mr. Cindy? Here. Before we start, Dr. Burnett's going to talk, but I want to talk first. Uh, when Mike and me started two years ago, and Dan started two, uh, two years ago, uh, we voted against him to, to become interim superintendent. Uh, but getting to know him, and uh, he came in, and at the time when uh, the school was uh, um, not in the transition, but it needed uh, some real good leadership and being able to help that. And the reason why I'm saying this is tonight is Dr. Burnett's last school board meeting. Uh, starting uh, July 1st, <laughs> the bald man in the back over there, so I'm calling the bald man, Kevin, you want to stand up, will be starting as our new superintendent. So what I'd like to do is let's give uh, Dr. Burnett a standing ovation. And at a later board meeting, we'll have uh, something for him, so. So it's not his last? <laughs> well, he'll be an audience member, he won't be. Well, thank you so much. And uh, actually, I was pleased to say that on the uh, renewal for this year, it was uh, unanimous. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I've worked my way into the good graces of the uh, board and public. And uh, more importantly, uh, the kids in uh, District 208. Um, I will say that uh, one of the um, things that I've always worked on throughout my career is to uh, be responsive. And uh, in, I could point to many examples in the um, 35, 36 years that I've done superintendent work um, where some of the best ideas actually came from parents and from staff. And uh, so being responsive, listening, uh, and uh, you know, recognizing that, that we're here to uh, serve our constituents and, and primarily students. So um, <clears throat> I think part of my legacy to the district is uh, certainly Pam Bilesma and uh, certainly Art Astro. And as Art has uh, looked through his um, athletic budget, he has uh, come up with an alternative that the board is going to look at tonight and the alternative would uh, allow us to uh, offer for next year water polo, uh, both boys and girls. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, at the outset, um, we will be taking an initial look at uh, a budget for next year. And uh, certainly over the last several months, we've had to work very hard, uh, uh, sharpen our pencils, if you will, and uh, with limited resources, still be able to offer uh, uh, a comprehensive program, if you will, uh, to students. So anyway, Matt, thank you very much for your comments. And um, I, I will. I would just like to build on one thing. With the uh, uh, re-enactment uh, of the water polo teams, we still, with Art and Pam working together with the budget, still made the cut number, or the reduction in uh, expense number that we needed to make uh, that we had in the scenario, which was I think we were going to be down to 600. So it was going to be the same, and there'll be, there'll be a press release out about that too. So I just want to let you know about that. And this uh, simply is an administrative recommendation. Uh, we uh, look at options. And uh, it's something the board as a whole will have to consider and discuss. So I, uh, I don't want to say necessarily that it's a done deal, but uh, that's the direction in which we're headed. Okay, uh, before us tonight, communications appearance before the board, staff and student <coughs> recognition. 
And Mary Ann, do you have the folder? Hopefully I know that we're out of session. Uh, I have had some calls uh, from parents that uh, their children uh, are otherwise engaged, but uh, be that as it may, the, the first uh, grouping of students uh, to recognize are from the Clarion uh, National Scholastic Press Association rating of All-American, uh, which is the highest ranking and is only achieved when points are earned for a first class rating uh, with at least four different marks of distinction. So uh, the editors, uh, and let, let me recognize Dan Mankoff. So Dan, if you would stand as uh, the faculty advisor. Uh, Bradley Wilson, editor-in-chief. Uh, Jason Flam, web editor. Anthony Siena, uh, content editor and Danielle Sanchez, the PR editor. Any of these students here tonight? No, most of them were seniors who graduated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Bradley Wilson in his final article said, uh, see you later, and uh, uh, I told him as he was crossing the stage, uh, Bradley, I do expect you to, to see you back in Riverside at some point, uh, so if any of you read that, uh, particular article that was uh, my take on Bradley. Uh, then uh, IHSA state championship track meet third place for the four by 800 meter relay team uh, broke the school record with a time of seven minutes uh, 54.25 seconds. Travis Trevizio. Tre Trevizio. John King Zett. Alex Amea. And Keegan Butterman. is that if you guys applied to Jimmy John's because you're freaky fast, uh, they would hire you in an instant. Uh, John, Congratulations. Say, John, yeah, I had, uh, I actually ran on the two mile relay team when I was here at RB back in 79 and we made the state meet and we didn't qualify for the finals. But um, I, I want to think it, what they did was very special and I don't know if you guys know this history, but last year they unexpectedly won their sectional meet then they went to the state meet and uh, by less than a second qualified for the finals. And then in the actual final race last year, uh, they were basically in ninth place and only nine teams are all state basically. And poor Alex tried his hardest, he tried his hardest, and at the last second he was passed and they got 10th place. So they didn't score any points at the state meet. So what I think what they did this year was extremely special. They dedicated themselves. They came back. They took second in their, uh, they won the sectional again. They took second place in their heat to get in the final, so there's no question that they're going to make it. And in my opinion, having watched track for basically my whole life, they had to run a perfect race to basically break the school record, which they did by like less than half a second. And to actually take third place is, is it's a major accomplishment. And I was glad to watch you boys do this. And you should be proud of that. You can remember that the rest of your life. And special uh, accolades to, I think, Coach Forberg and Coach Johnson and Coach Olson, and especially also Tim Brasek, who actually provided the motivation for these boys. Coach Forward, we owe our success to him for the past four seasons. 
the best of my life. Because each day, it was a pleasure working with him. From speed workouts in the rain, to bike workouts inside, listening to his weird Brazilian rap songs, <laughs> and God knows what. But everything had a point and always uh, was a key to our success. In our opinion, Force Forward, he does a great character, he does what's right. We experienced it first both man, first, we experienced it first hand, and both reaching our goals, and perhaps more importantly, when we fell short. Coach Forward always, always consistent, goal-oriented, teaches and motivates and treats everyone fairly and with respect. Commanders came from training back from all of us. We honor our Coach Forward with the symbolic of time, and tonight we nominate him for recognition as our recent coach of the year, which has never been done before, but I believe he deserves it. In these times of tight budget, the war can be simple. We suggest a free haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Notice Kara Gallagher. Is Kara? Oh, she is here. Hi, Kara. Uh, please come up and uh, thanks so much for coming tonight. Um, Kara has been accepted uh, to Street Law's Supreme Court Summer Institute for Teachers in George at Georgetown University's Law Center, and uh, with the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington D.C. And uh, Kara, I know you help a lot with activities in the government area, and uh, can't wait to have you back next year. Uh, I'd be happy to come to your class too, and uh, see you uh, put into practice some of the things that you uh, learned uh, at this institute. So, uh, a real high honor uh, for you and for all of us at RP. So, thanks. And if you have any statement, uh, certainly. Thank you very much. It's you know, it's it's. I'm flattered to be given this and invited, and I look forward to you know. I mean, I, I'm here as a teacher, but a, a legal advocate for every student who is not only in my class but in the building, and that's a big part of the program that I'm going to is to get you know more sort of informed and presented from the best of the best, and um, so you know, I look forward to bringing that back to RB and to my classroom. So, thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the monthly budget reports, and this is Chris Welton's last board meeting, and I know he's sad, but so Chris, we have the uh, May 31st uh, monthly budget report, 11 months through fiscal year 2011. Um, operating revenues total 22 million 530 thousand, or 102.8 percent of budget. Um, operating expenditures are twenty-one million one hundred twenty thousand, or eighty-seven point five percent of budget. Uh, operating fund balance total eight million five eighty-three one thirty-four, or uh, thirty-nine point nine three percent of annual operating expenditures. So Any questions for Chris? Chris, we're one hundred two percent of revenue because of the hundred thousand and hundred forty-nine. Is that true? Because of the. The hundred thousand dollar check from Aramark and the uh, reimbursement from the flood damage. The flood and the uh, yeah, that's that certainly helps, and uh, we've we've achieved we've uh, we've achieved budget for property taxes, which is uh, which I was concerned about, but we did uh, achieve that. I'm very happy where the revenues stand at this point in the year. Okay, I have three questions. All right, so okay, uh, on the private tuition. If we have, and I want to make sure I understood this, Chris, I asked you, the, as of 531.11, it's a roughly 350, and uh, it's going to go, it says it's going to be 382, and this, I'll ask it together. The same with substitutes, as of 531, it's 181, and as of 630, we're projecting 193. It seems like an awful lot of expenditures on both of those um, areas in the month of June when we only have a week of school. Well, sometimes the tuition bills come in right at the end of the year, and um, the you know those those are some very large expenditures when you talk about tuition and um, if they're budgeting for a full semester or a full year, and we suddenly get a big bill, those those can happen towards the end of the bill end of the year on tuition substitutes. Um, 
we we did have um, the need for mo more substitutes towards the end of the uh, school year. Okay. And the other question I have is on page 33. It's the fourth item down. It's non-certified salaries. It says payment just as for L. But we had no budget amount, and we spent $9,000 during the month. And one thing, Chris, I've tried to ask you. It says we spent 9000 during the month, but it only says we spent only 7800 year to date. I don't know how that could be. And it doesn't show a percent on you. So I have two questions. One is the question they kind of asked is how, if there's no budget and we're spending 9000 does it have to be approved by somebody to be a deviation for the budget, A? And B, you know, why would the report show it as the expended month to date is greater than the expended year to date? This account is the account we use for the LTC, um, the Learning Technology Center, and we have to pay their salaries out of here and then um, we're reimbursed for it. So it's kind of a, uh, a wash account. That's why we don't budget anything in this account. Okay. It's because it's an in and out. So we must have, um, the reason that we spent more than it says expended year to date, we must have received a check at, during the month and oh. had expenditures. Okay. Um, so th so that, that account is kind of, it's just a wash in and out for that LTC which at some point we're planning to move away from being the uh, financial agent for okay. that entity. All right. In about 16 days. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Dan? Chris, um, under uh, Board of Education, uh, we have a budgeted expenditure of $93,000 for Page. legal service. On Page. Page 29. Uh-huh. What does that include? Uh, that's legal service, all types of legal service. Forensic um, rattle and Forensic rattle is residency the residency investigation. Yes. Residency is a good part of yes. it. Uh, okay. We had the homeless case. Uh, uh, we did so have. That's pretty uh, inclusive, then. Right. Yes. All legal services. Okay. Thanks. Chris is, uh, yeah, Chris. A Chris is a follow-up to Tim's question regarding the private and public tuition. Yes. We know who's that's associated with it. Are we going to be under budget the whole year? We, I, uh, or are we going to be, I mean, I projected 568,000 for so the year. And, and you know, that's at, based uh, the, on the budget 635. Yeah. Based, so, yes, so that's um, based on known um, things, right? I had taken into consideration the board bills that you have in front of you tonight in my projection. So it should be pretty, Pretty inclusive. Uh, we might get an occasional bill between now and the end of the month. The um, this is the June is the final month of the fiscal year where we might need another check run um, to be approved. I don't know if we want to do it by the the finance committee or someone's going to have to uh, review some some bills that we're going to need to pay before in this fiscal year, particularly with the. Um, ARRA uh, stimulus federal grant um, where we're trying to make sure we get that money spent in the current fiscal year. Okay. To directly answer that too, um, for uh, students that are outsourced through their IEPs uh, that have special needs that we're not able to meet here, as uh, those instances occur, I pass the information on to the business manager and so we're able to connect specific names right. with, uh, with that category. Uh, we also have some instances of students attending our alternative school which is Harbor Academy and we have a resolution to uh, renew but, that. But it's a set monthly fee, is it? And, or is there expenditures in addition to a set monthly fee? Well, we try to anticipate what the number is going to be for the year and then. Uh, Do fix. we contract with them and say this is a set amount? Uh, yes, as as so then it's a as individuals. Right, are so we would know. Placed. Well, what I'm just saying is we would we should have this nailed 100%. Uh, or, or close. Uh, what, uh, Based on the fact that we know what the set what tuition makes it, costs. What makes it, difficult if not impossible to 
hit a hundred percent number there is you could have a student with special needs move into the district during the year uh, there could be other students uh, who uh, initially uh, were not being serviced whose right. level of service increases no what I guess I'm coming as sure. this projected 630 number should be a set number we should know what we got billed for and what we didn't get billed for oh absolutely. Know projecting out so that yeah, should be right yeah absolutely. I do think uh, that's I do think the projection will be very close to the right That's on. what I'm just trying to say. Right. That should be an easier one to budget based on the known factors mm -hmm. involved, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Laura? Um, on the legal expenses for the board, do we get a memo when uh, these are occurring? I mean, a general memo so that we can keep up to date that these are occurring? No, primarily you get that through the monthly bill statements. If you would like to... Uh, uh, look at those uh, specific bills we could uh, uh, you could meet with mr. Welton and uh, and look at uh, and view them or even just a memo that a uh, general what is happening so that as board members these are legal services that are part of our board business just kind of you know a or general think, statement we met I think you, you mean you want to know what we're getting for the money we're paying for you don't want to look at the bill right no just real general so if it was like um, Jan Moon said um, it's a, a student issue or a contract issue. It's, you know this month we met with the attorney on one occasion to discuss contractual issues you know just so that as a board we knew how much conversation that we needed with our legal counsel I think that would be helpful for us as a board sure, to know if, that if you wanted that information we could put it together am I the only board member does anybody else want that I'm not disagreeing <laughs> okay <laughs> well, I just I'm not disagreeing <laughs> okay. <either>. okay <laughs> we'll put that in talk okay. put that down. I think perhaps we might want to look at as a board get together and look at the bills that we are getting and maybe determine if um, we're getting uh, I, I understand that attorneys can bill you by the hour or they there's there could be a set fee for the month and as, as Dave will tell you there's a lot of things happening in the legal area in the last year so we may want to as a board sit back and not only look to get a feel for what we're actually spending our money on right. but are we in the right position either as a monthly fee based client or an hourly based client um, and maybe that's something we can talk about when the new superintendent comes in in two weeks yeah. uh, well, what direction he'd like to take yeah, because he'll be using the services of whatever attorney we have and it's more than the dollar amount it's to keep us all apprised of even some of the issues and 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 you should be apprised of the issues through the superintendent and I think tonight it depends on how much you want to burden yourself with take a snapshot every so often just to make sure things are good but you have a balcony's eye view of what's going on you let the administrators do their job and they'll do it well but every so often in good governance you have to take a look at it <coughs> you don't really mean to do this on a regular basis look at the billings no do I you? don't want detail what we suggest what we said is just is like a general, general statement you know we met yeah. with the attorneys we twice we to discuss contract mean, issues. In our packet. Yeah, in a package, you know, yeah. a sentence so that the board knows what the conversation is about. And if we need it to, then we can call and follow up in more detail. Okay. Okay. Anybody, any other questions on the budget?